Hey guys, welcome back to another lead code tutorial. In this video, we are looking at problem number 118, which is called as the Pascal's triangle. For starters, we are given an input called num rows, which represents a number or an integer. And what we need to do is give an output in the form of array of arrays. Before we jump into the solution, let's try and understand what a Pascal's triangle is. For this, I'm going to make use of a whiteboard. So a Pascal's triangle here, as you can see, it has multiple rows uh, within a triangle and each row contains numbers. So the first and foremost thing is it comprises of rows that we can see. The second thing is first and last numbers in each row are one so for the for the very top it's just going to be a single number one and then we have one and one and uh, we have one two one so as you can see all the green ones here uh, have ones in the beginning and one at the end another thing to observe here is each row has one element more than its previous row uh, the other part to this is each of the other elements uh, besides the first and last element uh, is the sum of two numbers immediately above it. So for example, uh, starting from the third row, uh, you can see that the first element is one and the second element is two. This is coming from adding one and one. And similarly, in the fourth row, you have uh, one, three, uh, then the elements directly above three are one and two. You add these and then it, it becomes three. And here, similarly, this three is a result of adding two and one. And then we have one. So it follows the same concept in each level. So just to do that exercise again in this row, we have one as usual in the in the first place. And then we are going to have 1 plus 3 here, 3 plus 3 in this spot, and then 3 plus 1 in this spot, and we have 1 uh, at the end of the row. So this is how you build a Pascal triangle. Now, uh, when you are given uh, something called as num rows, num rows is an integer. So when you say for num rows is 5, we need to return uh, our result should be um, in a in such a way that uh, we need to return one one comma one one comma two comma one so this is how we are going to return and all of this needs to be returned in the uh, in an array of array format so we'll put this in a bigger array and this this is how our output would look like if num num is num rows is if num rows is 6 we are going to have an extra row here all right i hope this explanation makes sense to you now let's get into the coding aspect of this so for starters i am going to create a result array that we are going to be returning from this function so the result array uh, will have uh, another array of one. The reason is we are going to start off the result with the first row. The first row is always one. And we can start off with row number two. So that will be my index of one. Since our index starts from zero, i equal to one is row number two. And then I'm going to loop this until i is less than num rows which is our input param and i'm going to continue this uh, uh, with i plus uh, plus now what we need to do is uh, the final return will be the result within this uh, loop we are basically creating a new row right while creating a new row we need to keep in mind of certain things 
one is uh, it it needs to have reference to our previous row right so result of result dot length minus 1 so that will give our uh, access to the previous row why do we need access to the previous row it is because we are adding things from the previous row right uh, in this case uh, we have in this case we have two that is coming from adding elements directly from above it above from the previous row that's why we need to have access to our previous row the second thing that we need to do is we should call our new uh, create a new row with one as our starting point create a new row with one at the beginning okay we always start off with one at the beginning as you can see all the ones are at the beginning and all the ones are at the end after creating one in at the beginning of the row we need to construct the rest of the row by looping through uh, another for loop that will be we are going to start off with uh, initializing another pointer called j equal to zero and the j will be equal to previous row dot length uh, and then we are we need to do previous row dot length minus one j plus plus why we need to do previous row dot length is if you go back to our uh, uh, diagram here uh, imagine building the uh, third row here for example so when we are building the third row uh, i will be using this uh, let me use this so we have we'll start off with pushing one uh, at the beginning of the row and then we need to add um, one plus one from the previous row which will make it two and then we can stop this loop we don't need to proceed further because at the end of the row we are anyway going to push the one so we don't need to go till all the way till the end of uh, the row we can stop at row minus one index similarly when we are building the fourth row we'll stop at this position we don't need to uh, work on this so any every time you were you're working on a row you're going all the way till row dot new row dot length or previous row dot length minus one uh, so that will be the position so it's the when we are building this row you are going to uh, this position and you will stop and um, so this position will basically be adding this one and this three and one into a uh, fourth position and in the new row you are anyway going to push this one separately outside the for loop i hope that is clear to you guys so let's start off with this new row dot push and here you will do previous row of j plus previous row of j plus one if you go all the way till the end uh, instead of doing a minus one when you do previous row dot j plus one uh, at this level you are going to go out of bounds that's why it's important to stop here so that you can add these two variables uh, and then uh, you can add the last one separately to the new row okay and finally as we have already agreed we are going to add a one separately at the end of the array so add one to the end of the new row okay so we have added it we have created a new row with one uh, filled up the rest of the elements and then we are adding a new row with one at the end uh, and then finally you need to push the new row into the result array so result dot push new row 
this is going to build our array of arrays uh, in this output format okay now let's try and understand the code one more time so i have created a result with a single row and then i have started with row number uh, two which is i equal to one in this case and then we am continuing till i is less than or equal to num dot rows and then we are getting access to the previous row for the current row creating a new row with one looping through the array till the previous door dot length minus one and and building the rest of the uh, elements into new row and finally we are going to uh, be pushing uh, a one at the end of the row and that new row uh, is finished at this point so we are just pushing the new row into the result uh, array which is going to go into the format of array of arrays finally we return the result so that is how you solve this problem so let's go ahead and run this as you can see we've got the expected result for uh, num rows equal to 5 and there is num rows equal to 1 let's also test it out for uh, 10 so case 10 yeah this works uh, good for all the uh, elements so that means uh, we have finished our solution here so i'll go ahead and submit this has been accepted um, so that is how you solve the pascal strangle solution on lead code i hope you like this solution and uh, if so give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel i'll be posting more tutorials uh, like this by solving more lead code problems um, and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one